Hey, welcome guys. We're going to continue our little lessons here on the astronomy unit for Earth Science. And this video is all about Pluto. I wanted to do a quick video and give Pluto its own its own time because for so long Pluto was considered a planet, the ninth planet orbiting our sun. And then um, it got downgraded to dwarf planet. And there's some upset people by that. And we're talking 14 years later and people are still upset by it. So I figured I'll give Pluto its, its fair video and we'll discuss why it's a dwarf planet and what the history of Pluto looks like. So let's start with the obvious, when was Pluto discovered? And that answer is 1930. In 1930, our telescopes weren't the best. So when we looked at Pluto, it was much bigger and brighter um, than it is now because we were seeing Chevron, it, Pluto's moon, um, and Pluto as one object. So it looked very big and bright. <clears throat> Over time, our telescopes got better, our technology got better, and we recognized that we were looking at two objects, Pluto and its moon, Chevron. And Pluto um, became much smaller. In fact, Pluto is only about 4% of the mass of our moon. So compared to the other super giant gases, gas giants in the outer, in the outer planets, um, Pluto is very, very small and rocky and icy. It's not, it's not a giant gas planet after all. Um, so we, we started questioning Pluto's planet category or status. Uh, fast forward and you come to the fact that we, after watching Pluto for, for decades, we recognize that Pluto's orbit is very strange too. While all planets have elliptical orbits, Pluto's orbit is very elliptical. Uh, so elliptical that it actually dips down inside Neptune's orbit sometimes, and it's, it goes out far enough that it enters the Kuiper Belt. And the Kuiper Belt is made up of thousands and thousands of other objects that are orbiting the Sun. And that made people start to think, maybe we should start looking at another name for Pluto besides planet. Um, on top of that, we started to discover other objects that were similar in size or even bigger than Pluto that were orbiting further out or in the same general area as Pluto. And we weren't willing to call them planets. So in 2006, a bunch of astro astronomers got together and they discussed um, and, and negotiated and debated. And they came up with uh, a true definition of a planet. And there's, they came up with four characteristics. And uh, a dwarf planet has three of them, but lacks the fourth one. And true planets have all four. And those are it has to have enough gravity that it has a spherical shape. So it has to hold itself together as a sphere. Uh, two, it has to orbit a star. Our sun's a star, so there we go. Uh, three, it has to be small enough not to be considered um, a star itself. So it, it, I mean, because stars are made of gas and some of our planets are made of gas, but it has to be, it has to be small enough and not bright enough that it's considered a star. And the fourth thing is it has to be able to clear its own orbit of other debris, of other objects. And that's where Pluto falls short because Pluto is in the Kuiper Belt with thousands of other objects. So it was called a dwarf planet. And there's actually a couple of dwarf planets. There's one in our asteroid belt or two in our asteroid belt and a whole bunch out in the Kuiper Belt and beyond that even. So Pluto, by definition, is no longer a planet. And some people are upset by that. But in truth, I mean, we're talking about something that really never fit the definition of the true outer solar system, or I'm sorry, the outer planet definition anyways. It was never a gas giant. It was never orbiting the right way. Um, it's way too small to be, to be one, of those, one of the outer planets. And um, we were misguided by our lack of technology or our limited technology at the time. I mean, in fact, Pluto has three moons, uh, Chevron, Nix and Hydra, and it, so that's a good thing when we talk about a planet having orbiting bodies around it, such as moons. But those three moons are we're adding to the overall brightness and size of Pluto. So, for the most part, I agree that Pluto should not be a planet. Uh, I like the idea of a dwarf planet; it's another category. And in the future videos, you can learn about comets, asteroids. Uh, we'll talk about meteors, and we'll talk about uh, dwarf planets a little bit more. I'll also talk about the inner and outer planets and what they are and what they mean to us. Have a great day.